Shapley values come from game theory. They were derived as a fair way to divide the value of a game amongst its players. So what does this have to do with machine learning? Well, we'll see that it's not such a big jump to go from dividing value amongst players to dividing a model's prediction amongst its features. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. Today, we're going to understand how to extend the Shapley value formula to explain model predictions. We're also going to take some time to understand how the Shapley value axioms lead to desirable properties for a feature attribution method. This is one of the reasons why Shap is so popular. To end, we'll discuss ways of approximating Shapley values. We'll see that this is the most significant reason for the package's popularity. That is, Shap drastically increased the speed at which we can make approximations. If you want to clarify some of the details in this video, then check out the companion article linked in the description. Otherwise, if you want to take your skills to the next level, wait until the end of the video, where I'll explain how you can get access to a Python SHAP course. In a previous video, we discussed this Shapley value formula. When applying it to machine learning, we need to keep in mind that S is no longer a coalition of players but a coalition of feature values. The wording can be a bit tricky here. You need to keep in mind that we want to explain an individual prediction. All the model features will take on a value that lead to that prediction. This is why we talk about a coalition of feature values. But it's usually implied that we are talking about an individual prediction. So often we talk about a coalition of features or the contribution of a feature to a prediction. But what we really mean is the feature's value. We also need to change the value function. We are no longer talking about the value of a game, but the value predicted by a model. So F is our model prediction, and the model has P features. This means the value of a coalition of features S is the model's prediction marginalized over all the features that are not in S. For the features that are in S, we use the actual values. To be clear, we are doing multiple integration. To marginalize over a feature, we integrate with respect to the probability of the feature's values. We do this for all features in S. To do this, we need to know the feature's distributions or use the empirical distributions. With this value function, we can understand how a model has made a prediction. The value of the game is now the marginalized prediction, and the players are the feature values. The Shapley values will tell us how each feature value has contributed to the prediction. So there are a lot of moving parts in that value function. To understand it, let's go over an example. Suppose we want to predict someone's income. We end up with a model F, which was built using two features, age, which is uniformly distributed between 18 and 60 years, and degree, where there is an equal chance that someone will have a degree or not. Someone comes along who is 20 and has a degree. Plugging in these values, we see that the model predicts that this person has an income of $5,000. We now want to calculate the Shapley value for degree. To start, we need to calculate the marginal contribution of degree to a coalition of age. We use the curly brackets to represent a coalition of features. We start by calculating the value of a coalition of both features. S contains both features, so we do not have to marginalize over any features. Instead, we use the actual values for both features. This is the same as the prediction for this observation. We then need to calculate the value of a coalition of age. Now S does not contain degree. This means we need to marginalize over degree and use the actual value for age. Remember, degree is not continuous. To marginalize over this feature's values, we do not need to use integration. Instead, we sum the prediction at each value times the probability of that value. 
which is 50%. We can now calculate the marginal contribution of degree to age. This gives us part of the calculation needed to calculate the Shapley value for degree. We would also need to calculate the marginal contribution of degree to a coalition of no features. The other consideration is the weights for these marginal contributions. And these are calculated in the same way as for a gain, except now we're looking at the number of features in a coalition and the total number of features in the model. Phew, okay, that was a lot of maths and I promise it's the last. Um, okay, maybe there's one more formula when we talk about the approximation methods. But before that, let's talk about why SHAP and Shapley is so popular. In the last lesson, we spoke about the Shapley axioms. And in the context of machine learning, these lead to some desirable properties. Firstly, Shapley values are efficient. Before this meant that the full value of a game is divided amongst its players. For machine learning, this means the prediction is divided among the features. Specifically, the Shapley values satisfies this equation. The, the sum of all Shapley values and the average predicted value is equal to the prediction. Another popular interpretation method is LIME. And in comparison, LIME is not if necessarily efficient. That is, the weights of LIME will not add up to the original model prediction. For Shapley, we know how each feature has contributed to a prediction. With LIME, we only know which feature is most important to that prediction. The next is symmetry. Two features will have the same Shapley values if they make the same contributions to all coalitions. Dummy. This comes from the null player axiom. A feature will have a Shapley value of zero if it never changes the prediction. In other words, features that are not used in a model will not have a Shapley value. Additivity. Shapley values for machine learning are additive. This is only relevant for ensemble models, where the overall Shapley value is the weighted average of the Shapley values of all the models in the ensemble, where the weight is determined by the same weight given to the predictions of each model. So for example, in a random forest, all of the decision trees are given an equal weight. And there's actually a fifth property called consistency. This one follows from the previous three properties. It tells us that if we change a model and the marginal contribution of the feature changes, then the feature's Shapley value will change in the same direction. This means we can reliably compare the Shapley values of different models. With all these desirable properties, there's one thing holding Shapley values back, and that is calculating them is computationally expensive. In our ML example, we only had two features, but as we add more features, the number of possible coalitions increases exponentially. And in practice, it's only feasible to approximate Shapley values. One approximation method is Monte Carlo sampling. How this works is we have a set of feature values and suppose we want to approximate the Shapley value for feature one. We randomly shuffle the features and all the features to the right of feature one are replaced by a random sample from the respective feature distributions. We get the prediction using these new feature values and subtract the prediction where feature one has also been randomly sampled. This is one sample. And we repeat this process n times. By randomly sampling and averaging, we implicitly weight by the distribution of these features. Monte Carlo sampling can still be impractical as we will need a large number of samples to get a reasonable approximation. This is finally where SHAP comes in. The SHAP Python package has become synonymous with Shapley values. And the key to the wide implementation is the speed at which this package can make approximations. It allows us to approximate a large number of Shapley values and aggregate them. In fact, it has contributed multiple approximation methods. Kernel SHAP reframes the Shapley values as parameters in a linear model. The method first works by permutating feature values. After enough 
permutations, the Shapley values are estimated jointly using linear regression. Estimating the values together is more efficient than Monte Carlo sampling, where the Shapley values are calculated individually. Tree Shap is even faster than Kernel Shap. It takes advantage of the structure of the individual trees in ensemble models. Tree Shap is so efficient, it can be used to calculate Shap interaction values. The downside is it can only be used with tree based algorithms like Random Forest or XGBoost. With all these benefits, SHAP still has its limitations. These are critical if you want to avoid incorrect conclusions when using the package. Check out the first video if you want to understand them. If you want to jump straight into applying the package, then check out the second video. Otherwise, you can get access to my Python SHAP course for free by signing up to the newsletter in the description. This will equip you with the knowledge and skills needed to explain any machine learning model using SHAP.